in the financing we're going to look at uh, what are the documents formal documents then what are the regulations in the that's important la because we are studying international law international trade law we we'll look at the regulation the regulation here we will uh, just concentrate on one which is ulb i'll explain to you later what is ulb mean okay so we we'll look at uh, later the financing of foreign trade uh, bills of lading this is a document which i refer to bills of lading bills of exchange promissory notes and negotiability of the bills and the notes and not and as soon finally not least we we'll look at the ulb as well huh? the bidding of the funds okay financing foreign trade uh, as you can know um, of course we cannot run away from involving money eh yeah, when we come to trade so foreign traders use formal documents as i mentioned to you that assure the parties that their sales contract will go forward as agreed so once the payment is made the goods can be transferred or the services can be uh, comp completed so th so we look at the three uh, bill of lading bills of exchange and the promissory note there's another one letter of credit but i think we will not include in the scope of our curriculum lading so the bill of lading is an essential document for all international sales okay international sales because it is a document of title the owner it allows the seller or the buyer to exchange control of the goods while the goods are in the actual position possession of the warehouse or the carrier then the next is the bill of exchange is a written dated and signed document i'll show you some examples later uh, over here there some of the examples which you can also can see from your textbook a bill of exchange is a written dated and signed three party instrument containing an unconditional order by a drawer so the drawer drawee these are two terms we going to learn today drawer and drawee over here we look at the drawer the drawee so where the drawee is a bank then the bill we will call as a check okay sometimes the way we write check also there is a, in malaysia sometimes we use we spell it as a c a c e h u u e sometimes eh, they spell eh? but most of the banks uh, use this c a c c k so where the drawee is a bank then the bill is known as a check where the drawee is a borrower then the bill is called as a note where the drawee is a buyer then the bill is we call as a trade acceptance okay so that's why we we have three category over here check trade acceptance then note let me explain again the definition here huh? a bill of exchange is a written document where it has dated sometimes they put a future date sometimes they put a current date and uh, signed by the parties containing an unconditional order that means there is no condition to say that uh, just pay we don't have any other conditions so we call it unconditional order by a drawer that means the person that uh, buy the product the directs a drawee it can be a bank or can be a borrower or buyer to pay to definite sum of money based on the value of the product on a specified future date so that's a bill for a change so uh, here we we'll look at the ulb eh, the law briefly what is meant so we need to know so remember whenever we talk about uh, international trade law we always tied to our convention to our treaties so um through the treaties and convention a lot of uh, rules and regulation been used in the our contract whether it is cisg uh for the sales 
whether it is a trade on goods uh, and so on. So over here we use ULB for the payment. So it comes under the Geneva Convention on the unification of the laws relating to bills of exchange. We call it in shortly ULB. Okay, so what are details of it you don't have to really know. Okay? You don't have to really know lah, about it. Okay, so type of bills of exchange we got two. Uh, one is the ULB, the other one is the common law. So the form that a, a bill of exchange must take depends upon the governing law. So it's a common law where even in Malaysia we use common law. So they they got two requirements, one is in writing, the other one is payable to order or to bearer. So ULB here, uh, there are more conditions compared to the common law. Common law says, yeah, it must be writing, of course, we sit over there in the earlier part, it must be in writing and written. It cannot be in a verbal, huh? must be in writing. And uh, it has the payable to order, that means how much we're going to pay. Then it has uh, additional details, for example, the term of the bill or exchange of promissory note, state of the place where drawn, state of the place where payable and be dated. Later I'll show you some examples of the, where you even put the location uh, over here. State here refers to the location and also dated. Ah, this is one of it, ah, time bill, eh? this is one of it, time bill, we got few here, I'll show you later, trade acceptance and so on. So here you can see the value, then the date, then the year, then the location, New York, eh? then uh, how many days, 90 days after a birth date, pay to who, bank of the river, and they even write in the words, okay, and they write detail the name of the drawer who are the buyer and the drawee or the seller. Okay, so a time bill is a payable at a definite future time. For example, this is an example of a time bill where they mention there 90 days after the birth date. The other one is a, a side bill is payable at the time it is presented or stated time after the presentment. So time bill is they mention in a future date. A side bill is a current date. Trade acceptance where it is the same name. A trade acceptance is a bill of exchange most commonly used in the sales of good and the, over here the seller of the good is both the drawer and the payee. For example here, the name of the person is 2 over here, uh, over here, then the other one is the buyer, also same person. In the case, you want to pay to the same person, so normally we can also do even for the check, eh? we can put in our name, we also can pay the check to ourselves. So in this case, we call this a trade acceptance. And they have a similar details as what we can see in the earlier note, where there is a date, time, location, and the name and the value of it. Okay, this is the check, eh, which is about, all of us are very familiar. This is a common check. A check is a bill of exchange on which the draw is a bank. Eh. Checks are always payable on demand. So, over here you can see the three definitions which I mentioned to you earlier. The check, the note, and the trade acceptance which uh, we call it a different name because of the the parties are different a bank a borrower or a buyer okay so here's some introduction now what are the documents that normally we use huh, in the international trade and uh, what are the convention that we use to govern our transactions later we go to the uh, the gist of the today's topic. Here all the disc, um, what do you call the documents we are using. Later we go to the gist of the topic where we will look into the endorsement. Uh, that's where we have conditions and we will look into the ULB 
what the ULB says when we look into the endorsement. So this is where the gist of the topic today. This all just uh, introduction only, huh? just to get to know, familiarize ourselves on the document that we normally use. Another one is the promissory note. Huh? A promissory note is a written document again, dated and signed by two party. But here the difference is only is the it is personally paid by the payee rather than getting someone else to pay. Uh, earlier, we can even get the bank to pay, then we can call it as a check. We can uh, get the borrower to pay, then we call it as a note. Then we can get even the uh, third party to pay, we call it the buyer to pay, we call it the acceptance, uh, trade acceptance. But over here in the promissory note, uh, a promise to pay is normally uh, the, where the maker is personally want to pay. He did not engage anyone. So, we call it a different name. We call it personal promissory note. Here I have some examples uh, to show you. Uh, this is a promissory note where there is a date here, number, uh, that means a series, serial number. Uh, then uh, negotiable certificate of deposit is the title of it. Uh, here they mention what is the value which is payable to the order of this company on the day, whatever day and by who. Okay? So, this is something that the person that you want to pay, give personally to the person, we call it a promissory notes. So, here we have a collateral note is secured by a personal property. Sometimes we have a collateral, for example, um, asset. Oh, a mortgage note is secured by a real property where we have the property with the bank, we call it a mortgage note. Or oh, installment note is payable in installments. So, when the bank is the maker promising to repay money plus interest, the promissory note is called a certificate deposit. So, normally we do this with the bank, that means we promise to pay to the bank for our installment or for our collateral and so on. Huh? Now, we look into the negotiability of the bills and notes. Uh, before we go to the endorsement, uh, what is the negotiability in the uh, third part? Uh? Negotiability. So, look like we have a few documents to be used uh, whenever we want to sell our goods. Bill of exchange, promissory note or the exchange bill. Now, we look at the negotiability of the uh, bills and the notes. So, to be negotiable, the bill must be in a proper form. Yeah, of course, that means it has to be not altered by anything because if altered, then it is a fraud involved, which I will talk to you later about the fraud. Contain a promise by the maker, that means the person that want to pay, the buyer uh, to the seller or drawer can be a bank, can be a person that sells the product. To make payment, to meet the promissory requirements, a bill, a note must fulfill the four conditions here. Number one, state an unconditional promise or order to pay, that means there is no condition there. State a definite sum of money, yes. Be a payable on demand or at a definite time, that means there is a date on the day or a future date. And of course, must have a signature of the borrower. If it is unconditional promise or order to pay, a bill or note must contain a promise or an order to pay that is unconditional. That means there is no condition. Later, I will show you some condition uh, where, where the endorsement comes in. Uh, all these are not condition, very simple, straightforward. I just pay you, there is no condition involved. But when it come to the condition where endorsement comes in, so, this some of the very straightforward, there is no condition, just pay according to the what the amount that we agree upon. Okay, so, this is a definite sum of money, monetary unit or account which I already mentioned to you earlier. Uh, we skip that one. 
Okay, payable on demand means signed by the maker or drawer where we put the current date or the future date. These are some of the details you can go back and read. The negotiation and transfer of bills and notes um, also talks about the non condition. You can go back and read as well. I don't want to repeat again. Okay. Uh, negotiation, negotiating order paper, uh, here the endorsement comes in. Huh? Okay, then we will look at it now. Negotiation is a transfer of bill or note in a such a way, usually by endorsement or delivery, that the recipient becomes a holder. Negotiable, uh, negotiation over here. There are a few types of endorsement which I will explain to you. Order paper is a bill or note that either <coughs> contains the name. Okay. A bearer paper is an instrument that either contains on its face or this is a special endorsement. Huh? That means it's a bearer paper, just an instrument, just a paper where we say paid to someone and the person sign over here. Endorsement here means the signature. William Kaiser has endorsed paid to this person. Person A. And over here is a blank endorsement, that means there is no details of uh, who have signed the document. So, a bearer paper is an instrument that either contains on its face an order to pay bearer or to pay in cash, contains as its last endorsement a blank endorsement. This is a signature, uh, I repeat again, endorsement is a signature of the payee or the last endorsee name in the special endorsement. Okay, I will show you later, this person, William Casey is the first endorser, but later we will have where the second person endorsed again, third person endorsed to pay to someone. I will show you some examples. So, now you may not really clear on this. I will come to this case later. Uh, okay. Qualified endorsement. A qualified endorsement is an endorsement in which the endorser does not guarantee that the instrument will be accepted and paid by the drawer or maker. Over here, what is does it mean is we, for example, we say pay to someone. Okay. Let's say this is a person A. Eh? A to A, la, for example. Huh? Then uh, A received this. A received this. This note. Huh? Then A will say uh, pay to B. So A will sign here. So we call this endorse. Uh, this is why we call endorsement. So, we want to pay to A, but here A have instructed, I will pay to B. So, the person has to sign here la, so to, to say that, yes, I agree to pay to the uh, B. Then you can go to uh, B, B received this, isn't it? Then they will be, if they want to pay to another person, B can say pay to C for example. Then B will sign here. So, we call this endorse. Huh? So, we call this a negotiable, huh? in negotiable. So, here there is a negotiability. That means, I can pay to someone using the same instrument uh, established by A. So, that means there is a negotiability. Earlier, there is no condition. We say here non-conditionally. That means, we cannot endorse it to someone to pay. So, we say it unconditionally. Eh? So, now we are moving into putting a condition. So, we call this negotiability. La. 
condition. So, in the international trade law, this can happen because sometimes we sell our product to wholesalers where they want to pay to another person. They can use the same instrument and get the other person to pay. It. But the important here is the signature, the endorsement. So, uh, in this environment, there will be a lot of opportunity to have a fraud. Okay? Fraudulent cases happens. Fraudulent cases happens. So, which is also governed by ULB. Yeah? Governed by ULB. And they only limit three times only. One, two, and three only. Cannot go to fourth, fifth, and so on. So, here are some of the conditions uh, put by ULB in the international trade. And I will show you one case where there is a fraudulent case happens. Huh? Here are some of the examples of the endorsement. Okay, there are four types of endorsement which I mentioned to you here, four types. Conditional endorsement, endorsement of a collection, endorsement prohibiting further endorsements and agency endorsement. There are four types. The first one, a conditional endorsement, endorsement that conditions payment on the occurrence of some event. That means, uh, I want to pay to another person because there is some transaction already taken place, B to C for example, uh, B to C. Endorsement for collection, endorsement that makes the endorsee a collection agent for the endorser. Sometimes they will keep on collect from another person and they want to pay from the collection to another party. Endorsement prohibiting further endorsements. Endorsement that states that the instrument may only be paid to a particular person. Huh? Then we have to stop. We can't do it to further endorse. Agency endorsement requires endorse to pay the proceeds from the negotiation of the instrument to the endorser or a designer third party. Forgery. Forgery, of course, is a sales a false making and altering of a writing with the intent to defraud. So, under the ULB, as I mentioned earlier, the drawer or maker is party who must sue the forger when there is a loss take place. Huh? The ULB makes a forged endorsement fully effective. Yes, we can charge the person. The common law makes the forged endorsement ineffective, placing the burden on determining a validity of the endorsement on the endorsee. So, sometimes in the common law, uh, we put the burden of the endorsement to the endorsee. But over here, the ULB makes forged endorsement fully effective. That means, once we found the forger, we can launch the report and bring the person to court. So, the exp two exceptions of the common law rule, uh, this is not important for you. Uh, Okay, Mayor versus Bank of Nova Scotia. This is a forgery take place. The appellant you issued a check to Barbara Hill for architectural. Oh, this is on the, I think it's on the a longer period of check, I think. Come on, let's go through. The appellant issued a check to Barbara Hill for architectural work. The check was altered to add associate. Ah, you see, not a huh? fraudulent happen, huh? The check was altered to add associates to the payee name, where I do not know whether we need to add the associate or not. Sometimes in the name of the company got associate. Huh? Okay. So, the check was honored by the bank or oh, that means the check was accepted. But when the check, when the cancelled check was forwarded to the appellant, he brought the alteration to the attention of the bank and they demanded reimbursement. So, the bank refused. Because the person that want to go banking uh, have uh, added the word associate, you know, and the bank accepted. But the mayor said the person already added the name. Why you pay the to the person? So any material alteration of the bill or note invalid, sir. Uh, I think it's a fraudulent. So the court found that there is a fraudulent material, and uh, they can really trace it back. 
since mayor could not show any actual damages so he was awarded a 5 ringgit nominal damage i don't know why eh? so they mentioning that uh, he really can't prove lah that the person has made the change okay they only paid 5 ringgit eh, for the uh, as a nominal damages Okay, let me go to the fraudulent case uh, earlier. There's one case that I want to. Okay, Miller versus Ray. Huh? Finney owned 21 pounds or shillings to Oden Hati. This note, I think I did not post yet. Huh? Uh, yeah, I think yesterday you got quite busy. I will post it later. Huh? So they purchased a note in that amount and mail, mail it, so it was stolen. So Miller, an innkeeper, came into the possession of the normal cause of business and the Miller presented the note to raise the bank clerk who refused to pay the note. So what happened was, the issue is whether Miller had a sufficient property in the bank note to entitle him to recover the settled value. So they had the discussion over here. And would the result have been the same if the innkeeper had conspired, conspired to steal the mail with others. So here is more to theft of the note. Because there is no uh, collateral, eh? here we talk about the collateral. Uh, I think earlier I talked about the collateral, eh? uh, the collateral note here. I just want to explain to you on the documents, what are the formal documents that we have, international trade, and what regulation that we have, then how the endorsement works. And you can go to how many times? The four types of endorsement. Uh, what is negotiability? That means we can have an endorsement uh, with condition. And what non-condition means? These are some of the concepts that you want to learn. Okay, these are four types again. Forged endorsement. This is a bank on the check. Eh? Okay, we come to this side again. So limitation on the excuses that drawers and makers can use to avoid paying off a bill or note. Ah, okay. Another concept that we want to learn is also how to uh, avoid paying. Uh, reiterate now. Huh? So we look into the formal documents, the regulations, the three type of notes. Negotiability means earlier we have a non condition that means there, there is no endorsement involved. Negotiability comes in when we can able to endorse. Sometimes international trade we have wholesalers and retailers where we can collect the money, there are four types of it, uh, restriction, collection and so on. So we can able to use this endorsement facility but it uh, also has a fraudulent cases where people can alter it. That's why we can see in the check case. Now we go to the whether we can avoid payment. Another concept is avoid payment. So in the anyone who acquires a bill or a note, uh, we come back to these documents here. By negotiation is a holder who is entitled to payment from the maker or drawer. So, holder means these are the holder. La. Pay to someone. So, we call this holder. That means I hold this because it was paid to me. Then we get someone else from B to C. We call another holder. Now we call this holder. Anyone who acquires a bill or note by negotiation is a holder. By negotiation, a eh, holder. Uh, is entitled to payment from the maker or the drawer. The maker means the person that who produced this note or the drawer can be anyone, eh? the buyer, um, the bank and so on. So there are only three excuses for not having to pay the instrument available to these parties. Okay, person in possession, and these are the excuses. Eh? Acquired instrument in a bad faith. Acquired instrument through gross negligence. 
That means uh, just now we can see that uh, in the case where the person who supposed to receive a postman but is able to collect the notes from a theft. So it's a bad faith and there's no collateral. Acquired instrument through gross negligence. That means there is no transaction take place but negligently paid to the person. Okay. So these are the under the ULB excuses that drawers and makers can use to avoid paying bills. Okay, so not a holder again, breach of contract. That means uh, whether it's a breach of contract for the sales of good uh, service, there's a breach of contract, so we don't have to pay you. Lack of failure or consideration, that means there is no uh, value in the transaction, they don't have to pay you. Fraud, illegality, incapacity, that means the person minority, that means below the age of 18 and so on. Uh, there are some other information here. Bankruptcy, alteration. This under the common law. Earlier was the uh, ULB. Eh? This under ULB. This under the common law. So, look like common law is more comprehensive eh? compared to the ULB. Eh? Okay, uh, this is a case on the Farsi's uh, Realty Investment versus Court of Appeal. Huh? So, in September 1960, uh, this is the case, and uh, obtain a loan from uh, and uh, two other two men signed the accommodation parties. The loan was not repaid. Four years later, Farsi's presented a check. Bank refused to pay. Uh, so, what happened here? Notice of the dishonor was not given to the parties for an additional four years. You see the check uh, is four years, you know. That means they give the bank to pay for four years. So whether or not a presentment for payment and notice of dishonor of the question check were made within a reasonable time. So what happened here is the payee delay of four years in, in presenting the check. That means the check was given to the person but the person did not bank in, it kept for 4 years. So the payee's delay of 4 years in presenting the check was not within a reasonable time. So normally the bank will allow how long? Eh? 6 months I think. Unless you have a reason. La. This is beyond the reasonable time you know. Okay. Ah, done. 